Do you have trouble squaring up large chunks of stock like this, trimming the end and getting it nice and square? Having a problem because maybe your saw doesn't even cut that deep? Well, I've got the solution for you tonight. The ultimate squaring jig, and I'm going to show you how to make it. Stick around. All right. Well, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to the shop. I hope I'm not miscalling this at the ultimate squaring jig because it's really a new jig that I've been developing because I'm getting very close to launching the workbench project. So one of the things I came up against was I'm gonna be working with some heavy timbers like this. This is a four by four. I don't think we have anything quite four by four, but we'll have four by three and three quarters. And the base is gonna be pretty chunky because we're gonna have a leg vise and we need this strong kind of anchor post. So all four legs will be like that. But in the joinery, we're actually gonna have twin tenons. So they won't have to be as long, but they're gonna be pegged through the sides and all that. It's gonna be great. But I got to thinking, how am I gonna square up these ends? I've struggled with this on my own saws. Sometimes, you know, your table saw crosscut will only go three inches high. And with your sled, you're losing whatever thickness of your sled is. With the chop saw, you might have, mine was always a little inaccurate. However, I should say the Festool um, one that I have, the Capex, I think it's called, uh, that actually can cut a pretty straight line. Of course, the Felder, <laughs> I feel like I'm going around. I don't struggle, let's put it this way. I do not struggle <laughs> cutting square you, in both directions over four inches in height anymore. But I'm telling you for the longest time, when it was just me and the Powermatic and my DeWalt radial arm or chop, it wasn't as easy. So in a case where you want to really clean it up and know you're dead 90, I've made this little box that is going to give us our method. And this is what we're shooting for. I'll give you a quick sneak peek. A box like this that's square and true all around. And it's going to be any dimension you want. Enough of that. Here we go. Okay. Let's make it. <laughs> so I'm going to show you, uh, I got a couple pieces here. These, of course, you're going to start with four. I'm just going to run these two. Then we'll switch out to another four that I've been getting ready. We'll see if we can clean up the end of this. So let's head over to the table saw. All right. So what I'm going to do, I already squared up an edge on this material. Now for the box, you want something that's going to be flat. I initially thought of using some heavy pine, but then ah, why not just use plywood? I happen to have some MDF plywood shorts and I thought I'd give this a cut. So this, these are only going to be about 11 inches long, but the other one I think is 14. You don't need it much longer. You just are basically um, cupping this around near the end of the piece. So what we're gonna do is first just rip these. I'm gonna just rip them. Uh, this will accommodate about a five inch um, post, but so I'll start out with six and a quarter. Let's go six and a half. All right, and I'm just gonna take a rip here. Let me turn on the dust collector. And here we go. Now, with all of the pieces, I just want to make a little notch in the end. I'm going to make it like three quarters of an inch long, say right about like that, and then a quarter inch or so this way. Okay, so we're going to take this out so that when we create our box, we'll be able to interlock them into what's called a rabbit. That's called a rabbit joint. It's just going to be a long kind of groove right down the edge. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up the saw. I'm going to set up for the quarter inch depth cut first. You could do it in either order, but that's just the way I like to do it. So I'm going to set this up, drop this down to a quarter inch high. 
and we want it to be the thickness of our material off the vent. So I'll just use the material as a site and just bump it over. All right, there it is. I'm just going to touch it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to just give it a notch. Here, let's start with the one I marked. So I'm going to go ahead and hit our quarter inch high one in this direction. Okay, that looks great. Now, I'm going to come over the other way, and that's a little under a half an inch tongue we're going to leave there. So we're going to now flip it up this way and make that second cut that, to that mark. So obviously when I do make marks, I don't use a uh, Sharpie, <laughs> so that why. Uh, but, you know, that's pretty forgiving, actually. I kind of like it. All right, so I'm going to adjust this now to the height of our groove. And I'm just going to turn it and just sight it. Looks pretty good. And now I've moved my fence over quarter. So I would set this all up, get it all set, lock it in, and here we go. Of course, I'd be running four pieces right now. You can see we've got a nice little rabbit joint right there. Fits in there beautifully. And then you can see the next one is set up for the other. So we'll get four going around in the box. This rabbit is giving us true alignment. So we come in, we know this is parallel, dead parallel with this edge actually. And the next one is parallel. So you end up with all these beautiful parallel sides. So the last thing we have to do is square the ends. So we want this to be our reference when we're making our squaring cut on the end of the, the large post. So we need these ends to be nice and square before we assemble the box. So all I'm gonna do is bring up the crosscut sled. Okay, so now I wanna cut these to length and I've got Four pieces, just happen to have them right here. And they've already been notched, okay? So they're all the same. Now, this sled, this is kind of a key. We're not gonna go all the way back to making a square sled because we have a video on that. If you don't have a good crosscut sled you can rely on that's true and square, check out the video. We're gonna put, put a link to it in the notes below. Um, but you can make a perfectly square sled like this. We have a video on making it and then a short video on setting a yes. dead square with three cuts. I will add those links after. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're going to use the sled to create these nice square cuts. So I'm going to make the first cut on this side of the blade and then I'll just slide right up to a stop that's been conveniently located to give us, you know, this, these are going to be about 11 and a half or so. Um, it doesn't really matter. Make it longer if you need it for your stock. Okay. All right, here we go.
All right. That's it. Let's head back to the bench. All right. So we're going to use the nail gun. I've got the 18 gauge, one inch um, 18 gauge brads in here. And I'm going to use that in conjunction with a little glue. Let's do this kind of fast. I did it a little slower earlier to make the first box, but I'll just try to... You're going to make, take a little more care than I am right now. I'm just doing this for uh, demonstration purposes only. Just put a little bit on the tongue of the rabbit here. Not the actual rabbit. Not uh, the animal, I mean. <laughs> I have no idea Thanks why they clarifying. call them rabbit. They that was do, for me, I think. They do. <laughs> I'll take it. On the ears of the rabbit. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop together this first corner. I'm just going to stand it right up. Get it nice and flush on the end. And you can hold it pretty, pretty flush and then just fire a little beautiful flush as can be. And I'm holding it right up, right good and strong into that rabbit. Go ahead and press it right in there. Make sure when you shoot this, you're safe about it. Just, I know you both said, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what did you just, do? all right, so there it is. Nicely nailed down that first one. Let's hit the second. Can only go this one way. Make this nice little box. And I forgot to check for square on that corner, but I'll check it after this. Let's flip it over. Nice and flush right on the end. Piece of cake, huh? Okay, that's beautiful. It's coming along. All right, now those rabbits may not be dead square. Yeah, see, that's a little out. So I can persuade it a little bit. They're slightly <laughs> open, but that's okay because we're going to just gently flex them. And I'll do this over here. And we could check for square again. That looks pretty good. All right, so now we're going to get the last piece in. Just going to drop right in here. Beautiful. Press it right in. Get it nice and flush. Now, this is the key that it's flush right around here, like a skating rink. You like that visual? Camera lady used to do some figure skating. <laughs> <laughs> How do these small little moments in my life find their way? I know you wanted to talk about it, I thought. Yeah, I sure do. Didn't you, weren't you in a little club in your Lexington? Oh, I had a dream. Didn't every little girl in the 70s you had your Dorothy want to be Hamill Dorothy haircut? Hamill. Yep. You still got that going on, actually, no. a little bit. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Not really. And it's right in here. And let's just finish up, coming down the edge. Beautiful. Now, isn't that a thing of beauty? A nice flush surface, and you've got a beautiful box like that. Now, you want to make sure that you clean out the inside corners if you got any squeeze out in there. So I'll get that right now. You know, so this box will actually be worth. Actually, nice grain there. Using, yeah, this one, this is MDF, but it actually is some um, oak. It's actually this is the worst side. The inside is the, it's almost it's rifts on. Uh, mm. Anyway, um, these are some cut off pieces. My friend Steve gave me before he moved. Nice. All right, so that's it, all cleaned up on the inside. 
Now we've got that nice area. We let this dry, set up nicely, and you can work with it. But we're gonna take one out of the oven, the one I showed you earlier. And this one's a little bigger than it probably needed to be, but same dynamic going on here. Just a straight box with four rabbited corners and a good flush surface to use as our reference, okay? Now, this is just going to slip over the piece. Let me get it into the vise. I'll bring it up a little bit. So we can see it better. So the end we want to square up we put in the vise like this, and the box is gonna drop over like a sleeve, and we're going to clamp it to the piece. And then we're gonna use a router with a large plate and just set the bit down so we skim the end, using this as, an effort, as a reference. What could go wrong? All right, <laughs> now I need your help on this. If you guys think of an improvement, I will gladly consider it because this is a new developed ultimate squaring jig. Now the only thing to hold this, I thought, how am I gonna hold this? Well, I thought I could get some clamps through the side if I bored some holes. So I took my Forstner bit, this is like an inch and three quarters, so that I could get the pad of the bit through, and I just bored a hole there and there and then I got to thinking, hey, if this is useless, I got the beginnings of a birdhouse you right do. here. <laughs> you were thinking that, right? I, think, no, I wasn't thinking that because uh, I know it's going to work. Uh, no, I was thinking that. No. So this would be all right for some certain type of bird. Someone let me know what kind and uh, who knows, maybe it's going to have to be put into use. Now, I've already got my router set up with a, um, an upcut bit that is set at a half inch depth. So I'm gonna drop this down just below a half inch. So I'll just be skimming the end. Now, in clamping this, actually I wanna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my clamps on. This is the part that I might be able to improve. It's getting these clamps on. So first I'm gonna just put a quick grip on here to hold it so I can get the major one on through the birdhouse window. Okay, here we go. So here comes one, and I realized I needed a spacer because this is so big, this initial prototype. It's probably a little bigger than it needs to be, but hey, it's here if I've got a big one, a big uh, plank to true up at some point. All right. See, this, <laughs> this is a key. You want to make sure your, your uh, spacer block is not above the skating rink. So we're gonna drop that down. <laughs> Very good, nice job. All right, I'm just gonna gently snug it in this direction because it's pushing it into this side wall. Now we have the second hole on the other side that's going to push it this way. So it's gonna be basically jammed into one corner that's going to true it up for square and let's get the other spacer in here. There it is. All right, so now I'm gonna get this out and we're just gonna make sure that's snugged up in both directions, that looks great. Okay, snugged up, it's below, it's just above half an inch, so I should be able to get my router right in there. All right, so let's set up. Now I'm gonna run the router around here, but this MDF could be a little sticky. So I already tried it and it was, so I'm gonna put a little wax on there. Always good to put wax on your machines and whatever to make them, everything slide more smoothly so you're not getting jammed up in the middle and forcing anything. Everything should move easily when the power's on. All right, let's get the safety glasses. And I only have a half inch bit in here. If I was doing a lot of this, I'd probably put a larger one. 
You could even have any kind of flat bottom bit, basically. Even a dovetail bit will work nicely because it slices in from the sides. But one of the great aspects of this cut I wanted to mention was we're trimming end grain. So all that grain is sticking straight up. And that's actually very kind to the routing process. When the router's coming across and cutting those uh, fibers, they're all standing up straight, almost like hay in the field. So you're like really slicing them at the end. When you cut them from the side, it actually is more effort for the router bit to trim them. So when they're up there like this, it's just gonna skim along and cut all those fibers and they come off more like hairs than dust when you're doing the side, as it is when you're doing the side grain. Okay, so here we go. All right, let's check it out. Let's get our uh, clamps off. And our birdhouse box. And let's check this out. I think we need Mr. Woodpecker's square for this one. These thin blade squares, they really read well. So we set this on here. Boom! <laughs> that is just so good, it's scary. My father used to say. All right, we're right there. And then we're gonna turn it this way. And check it for square. And it's dead nuts again. I mean, see how easy that is? <laughs> Of course, once you get the box built, it's fairly easy. And if you were doing a lot of them, you know, you would set up a system. But you know what? You can always go out and buy a felder and avoid building the birdhouse altogether. <laughs> and you'll be good to go. But that's just one aspect of, of jig development that to share with you. I mean, that's no, nothing super fancy. But I've been thinking about when I cut the tenons, if I want to cut that wide shoulder that's between the tenons, rather than chiseling them all out, you could always go ahead and rough cut them out and then use a bit, something like this with a, sh with a bearing, and you could bear on the tenon and with it set in the box, it would cut beautifully flush and square around. You could also use a straight bit with a collar, with the guide collar, but that's gonna give you a little offset. Um, that might be safer than doing this because this might trim your tenon after you've got it already cut. But that's one way we can use this jig to cut down between the twin tenons, or if you just needed to simply square the end of a beefy beam like this and know that you had it dead on. All right, any questions? Uh, Tim says, uh, how did you get the corner cleaned out good? Oh, I, you actually route slightly into the box, Tim. That's a good question. Um, I actually skimmed just a little deeper into the box in the corner. So you can see that right there. See where I, I just pushed it slightly in. So it completely skimmed along the corner. Nice clean cut. We use a similar method, uh, not exactly the st same style of box, but if you've built any of the beds with me, we use it for trimming the long rails, and we're actually gonna break out that jig when we build the bench, because the workbench we're building will be able to disassemble. So the base can disassemble, the long rails will have the classic bed bolt mortise and tenon joint, 
and we'll use a similar uh, approach to cut the tenons on the ends of those long rails, just like we do for our beds uh, with the traditional bed bolts. Any other questions? No, we're good. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a little fun to do something kind of simple, but in need of precision when you're in a tough spot with a big timber like this. Uh, remember, if you like this content, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing. And don't forget to check out epicwoodworking.com. You will want to get on the mailing list yes. if you enjoy this content. On behalf of the camera lady and myself, we look forward to seeing you next time, right back here on Shop Night Live. Let's go make it epic. <laughs> See you later. Good night, everybody. Thanks so much for being here.